So how is it calculated? We spent a lot of time talking about that. We have the fair market value of the vehicle. We've spent time talking about how we, how we find that number, what that number is. If we buy at the dealer, we get to deduct our trade-in value. And we're left with a taxable value <coughs> times the rate in effect for the calendar year of the transaction, and that gives us the amount of tax we're going to pay. So let's, do a con let's look at a couple of uh, scenarios. Let's look at what would happen today if I bought a car. If I were fortunate enough to be able to go to the dealer and I'm gonna buy a $35,000 vehicle, which it's hard to buy one today that isn't, isn't that much, and I have a trade-in that's worth $15,000, I have a $20,000 taxable value, and that's, you know, there are other things that feed into that, but for purposes of our illustration, this works. This taxpayer that's purchasing this vehicle lives in a county with a 7% sales tax rate. So they're going to pay $1,400 in sales tax on that vehicle because they're paying on that net taxable rate. Now, this taxpayer lives in a county with a mill rate of 25, overall 25 mills. So their first year, they're going to have an ad valorem tax bill of about $350. So year one, their tax investment in this vehicle is $1,750. Now in our new system, March 1st system, the title ad valorem tax is gonna be calculated again on that net taxable value. So it's going to be calculated on $20,000. The rate, the initial title ad valorem tax rate is 6.5%. So this taxpayer will pay $1,300 in title ad valorem tax. So they've saved $100 already and they're not going to pay that annual birthday tax, so they've saved that. So in year one, they've saved $450. Yes, ma'am. Okay, the question is if there's a, a, a sale that occurs at the end of December 2013, and they come in to do the title work after the first of the year, what is the rate? The rate runs off the date of purchase. So if they purchase that vehicle December 31st of 13, the rate's gonna be 6.5%. If they purchase that vehicle January the 2nd of 14, the rate would be 6.75%. So if, for those of us who buy at dealers, our life hasn't changed much, has it? Now, if I happen to live in a, a, a county where my sales tax rate is only 6%, I am paying a little bit more than I would pay in sales tax, but I'm still saving the amount of the annual ad valorem tax that I would be paying. So for those of us that buy at dealers, or those of you that buy at dealers, our world is still very much like it was, only we don't have to come up with that money every year to pay that, that annual ad valorem tax. However, let's look at our casual sale people. Now, this example is a little bit exaggerated for the type vehicles that normally are the casual sale. But I'm just using the same, the same vehicle number. It's a $35,000 vehicle. Again, there's no trade-in allowed on it. But today, if the person bought that $35,000 vehicle, all they would be required to pay at the county to transfer title is how much money? $38, $38 right? All day, one day last week, I was saying 28. Somebody nicely at lunch reminded me that I couldn't add. So I do know now it's 38. I was, going, I was saying 28 all day. I don't know what was wrong with me. But for $38, they walk out with a piece of paper, or will soon get a piece of paper, that says, I am the proud owner of this automobile. Now, after March 1st, their world significantly changes. Because in order to go in and get the title transferred on that vehicle, you're going to look them, if you're at the tax commissioner's office, and they're gonna hand you $38. They're gonna hand you the title application and their registration money and their title application fee money and they're gonna say, I wanna get a new title. I just bought this car and I need to get my title. 
and you're going to say, I am so glad you came to see us today. <laughs> because I will be glad to process this title application for you. But in order to do that, you owe me $2,275 plus the $38. Now, when you've picked this poor fella up off the floor <laughs> and said, okay, you know, gotten the EMTs in to, to, to revive him, you explain the new process. This is the group of taxpayers we need to, to educate. Now, my example is certainly an exaggerated example for most of the transactions that happen in the casual sale world. But if I'm a person who can only scrape up a few thousand dollars to buy a vehicle, that's all I had, and now I walk into your office and you tell me I owe you a couple of hundred dollars, I'm in the same place. If I can afford to buy a $35,000 car from somebody, I could probably come up with $2,200. But if I can only scrape up $3,000 or $3,500 to buy a vehicle and you tell me you need $250, I'm in that same financial pinch that I would have been in the first case. So these are the taxpayers that I think are the ones that are going to be, number one, they're going to be shocked. They're not going to understand. They're going to think we changed the rules and didn't tell them, and we did. Because the stories out there aren't necessarily telling them the whole story. So these are, yes, ma'am. Okay. Question is, you go buy a car and you want to have it for your child. You would be able to, you may, buy, you may title that vehicle, but you still are going to, at, at initially, you're going to have to pay the full title. Even if you transferred one to your child, that, and we'll spend some more time talking about that, there is a special rate for a family transfer. But on the initial transfer where you bought the car, and wanted to, to get the title, you're going to be subject to the title rate of whatever the value of the vehicle is. If you then want to transfer it to your child, you can do that at a reduced rate. Or you could go straight from the purchaser and put it in your child's name, but it, has, it will be subject to the full tax. Okay? Right. The age hadn't changed. Any, any of those current laws that deal with who can, who, who can be on a title 18 and older hasn't changed. Okay. Yes, ma'am. You don't have to be 18. My, my expert back here tells me so. So I guess you could be 16. You would have to have a driver's license. They don't have a Georgia driver's license. They may have a learner's, but they don't have a okay, Georgia well, license. Have a license. Yes, Probably, you could. Themselves? You could, and I doubt they're going to get anybody to cover insurance for them with that car in their name, but and that would be your second thing you'd have to look at. Yes, ma'am. Um, I've already been asked, is this going to be deductible if the actual work is actually Okay. Nobody asked that question in a couple of days. Her question is, will this new title ad valorem tax be tax deductible for income tax purposes? No. The reason no is, and, and I'll say no and I'll qualify that no. For federal tax purposes, the Internal Revenue Code says in order for an ad valorem tax to be deductible, it has to be a recurring tax. In this case, it's not a recurring tax, it's a one-time tax. Now, there has been a proposal at the gen in the General Assembly to make this title ad valorem tax deductible for Georgia tax purposes. But of course, that hasn't passed yet, and we'll just have to wait and see if it ends up being passed for Georgia tax purposes. Now, I suggest if somebody in your office asks you that, to be very careful giving tax advice and just tell them they probably need to check with their CPA but that's the information that we've been given or that we have decided looking at it. Okay, any more questions on, yes ma'am. Mr. Quick, when you talk about the sale between families, basically, mm -hmm. if there was a mother and a son on a title and then the son got over, the mother took her name off of it, how is that going to apply? Can you hold that question till later? 
You'll be here all day, right? Hold that question until later. Because we'll get some lively debate, and we probably want a smaller crowd so we can argue through that one. <laughs> all right? Now, let's talk about we've got our money in, right? At least we have money from one transaction. It's either $1,300 or $2,200, whichever one of those would be our case. Now we have to figure out what the heck are we going to do with this money? 